All right, so today's video is going to be about how to get started mining with NiceHash Miner. The reason why I like NiceHash Miner is because it's pretty easy to get started and then they basically pay you out in Bitcoin. So what we're going to talk about today is mining with graphics cards on Windows. Basically, you'll be offering your hash power or processing power to the mining pool that is NiceHash and then, then they reward you based on how much power you throw up. Um, and pay you out in Bitcoin. So on the homepage here, um, you know, they got like a startup video if you want to watch that. Um, and then scrolling down, they do have a profitability calculator. So if you want to see how much your GPU can do, personally, I like to use whattomine.com. So for me, I have a 3090 NVIDIA graphics card and my power cost is 0.11 cents per kilowatt hour. So you just hit calculate. This will tell you every single algorithm that your card can mine um, in order of most profitable to least profitable. So as you can see, NiceHash pops up um, quite a bit here. So that's what my card can mine on just NiceHash alone. And then they have other options here as well. So with NiceHash, um, because you're mining on a pool, it's gonna be a little bit less than mining directly from Ethereum. So just keep that in mind. But for the sense of ease, I prefer to just use NiceHash um, so yeah, doing a quick estimate here. So it says I can make about $4.52 a day. So multiply that by 30 days. So with this card by itself, I can make about $135 a month um, before power cost. And then they do have the estimate with power cost there. So about a hundred bucks a month, um, just running this card passively um, in Bitcoin. So that's pretty good. Um, doesn't really get any easier than this. So before we get started on the actual NiceHash platform though, you do need to understand these five things. Um, we can talk about these in other videos, but this video would be like several hours long if we went in depth on each thing. So if you guys have questions about these five things, just let me know, we can make some videos on them. But the first one is crypto wallets. So that's basically how you move around your crypto um, and do different kinds of transactions. So obviously you should have a general understanding of that. The next one is Ethereum going proof of stake or the merge. So we're going to be talking about mining on the Ethereum blockchain today. That's not going to be around forever. And that's the most profitable way to mine for most graphics cards. So just keep in mind that that's not going to be there potentially like six months from now. Um, we don't exactly have a day of when that's going to happen. But uh, you got to keep that in mind before you buy, you know, $6,000 graphics cards and spend all this money, you got to keep in mind that maybe you won't break even before Ethereum's not even mineable anymore. So just keep that in mind. Um, there are obviously other coins out there that are mineable, but um, we're not going to talk too much about that right now. So the next one is graphics cards in general. So that's how we're going to be mining the currency. So you should have a general idea of what your card is, um, what it can do, LHR versus non-LHR. LHR. And then, you know, if you want to do some overclocking to kind of maximize your profits, um, that is something you should kind of learn about as well. And then number four, what is proof of work mining? So we can kind of cover this real quick. Basically, you're offering your GPU or graphics cards to use their processing power to basically do the work or solve complex puzzles. And then you kind of get rewarded based on that. So that's in a nutshell what proof of work mining is. Obviously, you can go down a deep rabbit hole about like the purpose and why, um, but we're not going to do that right now. And then the last one is crypto taxes. So in the U.S., which is where I live, we're still working on getting this thing regulated. Um, there's a lot going on pretty much every week. There's a lot of conversation. Um, so yeah, I have a CPA that does my taxes. Um, if you do these by yourself, you got to do a lot of research to kind of stay on top of everything. It's changing constantly. So just keep that in mind before you get started. As soon as you start mining, you know, there is tax implications that you do need to consider. So just keep that in mind. So going back to NiceHash here. Now to get started, you do need to set up an account. So just hit this get started button and then fill in the information there. Um, and then once you're logged in, I will meet you on the other side. So once you're logged in, you should have a screen that kind of looks like this. Um, mine is in dark mode, so keep that in mind. And then I already have active rigs in here. So for you, we're going to go to the mining tab and then we're going to hit download miner or add ASIC. So once you click that, you go to this screen and then you're going to download NiceHash Miner. 
Um, the quick miner is an option for some GPUs, but for the scope of this video, we're going to talk about just the nice hash miner. So download that. Um, you will have to allow your firewall access to basically allow these algorithms to mine. So just if anything pops up, you're going to have to allow it. Um, in some cases, you might even be better off just disabling your firewall. That's up to you guys, but just keep that in mind. It is going to pop up as a threat. Nice hash has been around for a long time. They're not doing anything to your computer, um, but you do need to keep in mind that you are kind of allowing different connections to your computer. So decide whether or not that's worth it for you um, and then kind of go from there. So once you're logged in, download the app and then install it. And then I will meet you on the dashboard. So once you're completely logged in, um, you'll have the option to start mining um, once your GPU finishes its benchmarking. So Mine's already done. It benchmarked 32, um, 33 algorithms. So we can click on that real quick on the benchmark tab. And then we're going to click on this up here just to see which ones are the most profitable. So Dagger Hashimoto seems to be the most profitable for this GPU. Kind of gives you the estimated hash rate and then um, how much Bitcoin per day it's going to generate. So doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. Um, if you guys want, you can turn off algorithms. The nice thing about NiceHash is different algorithms are kind of changing all the time. So this is what's most profitable right now. In an hour from now, Excavator might do more per hour of Bitcoin. So NiceHash will actually automatically change it to that if you want it to. Um, but we're going to leave everything right now. So we're going to go to the dashboard and hit start mining. So you'll probably get a little black box like this. All the algorithms are a little bit different. And it's going to give you different information on what's going on. So I can upgrade to the latest um, edition of Phoenix Miner here. So there was an error on that, um, but I'm not too worried about it right now. So we're just going to let it start up. All right. So it did have to filter through a few algorithms. Um, I probably do need to update if I want to get the best um, in most recent updates to get the most hash power on here. But it has settled onto T-Rex, so let's go back to the benchmark tab here. So we're mining on this second one right here. Um, I wonder why that says unstable, probably because it needs an update. So yeah, that's the one it's mining on. It's the second most profitable. And so yeah, we're just going to let it do, do its thing. Um, it's got your GPU information there, and it's starting to generate hash power for the pool. So, so this is what it looks like once it starts mining. Um, and then on the dashboard here, we do have current profitability. So once it actually gets going all the way, that'll go up a little bit. And then every so often you get paid out. So this will be your unpaid balance here. So I've got about 26 cents USD if you go back to the website. So under the mining tab here, you have basically the same information. You got the actual profitability. Um, I have a couple of rigs running, so that's why it's 21 bucks an hour or per day actually. And then, like I said, we got that unpaid mining balance there. So this is where the wallets come into play. It's mining it to your nice hash wallet. And then um, it's going to have it actually paid out to your wallet in about three hours and 42 minutes. So once that time's up, whatever is available in the unpaid category will go to your actual wallet balance. And then from there, you can take that out of the platform. Maybe you want it to go to Coinbase so you can trade it or whatever you want to do. Um, but you do need to kind of understand walls to be able to do that. So in a nutshell, that's pretty much all there is to talk about with NiceHash. I mean, it's super easy. You know, you just kind of let it run and do its thing. Now, if you're going to be playing games on your computer or using your graphics card, I would recommend disabling it. Um, NiceHash does have a feature to kind of automatically detect when you're playing a game or running a full screen application and it'll like turn off or minimize how much power it uses but personally i just turn it off i don't want that to impact my frames or anything like that so just keep that in mind um you can mine on your cpu if you want to personally i just don't think it's worth it um you know cpus are a little bit more fragile um i don't think they're meant to necessarily be at 100 percent usage all the time like a graphics card is so I'll just keep that in mind. Um, you can do whatever you want. I mean, obviously, it's it's more profit for you, potentially. Um, but I just personally don't think it's worth it. So anyways, um, that's kind of like a crash course on NiceHash Miner. If you guys have any questions, let me know. That was just kind of a quick start guide. 
this can get really dirty real fast as far as like problems and stuff like that especially if you're setting up like a crypto mining rig um they're complicated kind of machines especially if you don't understand how to build computers and such so this guide was more for the guy that has just a gaming rig wants to mine some crypto on the side um you can definitely do that overnight while you sleep and make some of that sweet passive income so Anyways, like I said, um, that probably wraps it up for the video. If you guys have any questions, just let me know, and uh, I will get to you as fast as I can.